the Travel Like a Boss podcast, the radio show all about traveling like a boss by being your own boss. Stay tuned for weekly interviews featuring guests that have built their own online businesses. If you would like to have access to our entire back catalog, visit travellikeabosspodcast.com for instant access. And here's your host, Johnny FD. Hey everyone, this is Johnny and welcome to the episode one of the Travel Like Boss podcast with my friend Christian Yates. What's up guys? How are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? Yeah, good. So <laughs> we are in Chiang Mai at a coffee shop. And Kristen is here because she was the one who convinced me to take this personality test. Myers-Briggs personality type indicator. Big fancy name for, yeah, personality test that's, uh, well, it's not actually a personality test, by the way. I don't know if that's oh, really? to start out. Yeah. yeah, I actually just realized this. It's, um, I was just reading a bit more about it. Well, I've been really passionate about the Myers-Briggs uh, indicator for a while. I think it's a really great comprehensive way of looking at different aspects of ourselves and how we interact in the world but it's it's actually it's not a test it's just an indicator which helps you identify your preferences for making decisions and basically interacting in the world so it's not like putting you into a box because a lot of people are okay i like that. that uh and also I don't think it's like forever. It can be one of those things where you can see how you interact now mm. and then you can test it again or I guess take the, the personality. It's easy mm. to say personality test, but we could take it again and then see where we are next year. That's true. Yeah. That is true. I, I do think with the MBTI, it, it is a bit of, so it, it is identifying more of who you are at your core, like your core tendencies, so at least as far as I know, these things don't tend to change so much, but, but it, but it definitely can. I think as far as where we lie on the scale. I, I can see yeah. that because uh, when I posted on my Facebook app, so here's, here's all how it all stemmed. All right. Yeah. And this is one of those episodes where we're recording it. So if you guys rather watch it than just listen, go to YouTube, search for Johnny FD. And this is episode 141, uh, Travel Like a Mouse podcast. So you convinced me to <laughs> take the test. He said, go to 16personalities.com, take the test. It's free. Uh, if you guys want to somehow, if you guys want to pause and do it first and follow along, you guys are welcome to do that as well. And I normally don't like taking, I hate horoscopes. I hate psychics. <laughs> uh, I don't like anything that I feel like is pseudoscience or would put you in this box for, you know, for any reason, but really, you know, especially if it's a false reason and then you start living your life like that. Mm -hmm. But I think what convinced me to do this was not only is Myers-Briggs like scientifically backed, yeah. uh, it's also very different per person. So it's not like a horoscope where you just mixed them up and said, okay, this one's yours. It's, it's not going to automatically fit because it's not all good things. It's bad things too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the Myers-Briggs, it's definitely not woo-woo science. It's really looking at your cognitive functioning and looking at breaking down these four different um, four different aspects of where you get your energy, how you perceive and process information, make decisions. And it's just showing you how you tend, what your personal preferences are with doing that, with doing those things. So it's, it's based in like cognitive science and I believe it's Jungian psychology. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. So what happened was after I took the test, I shared on my, fa my personal Facebook wall and with, within a few days, pretty much all my friends started taking it and sharing theirs as well. Mm. So you kind of started this little movement. Oh, really? So very cool. Awesome. <laughs> and a uh, fun fact is when I posted, I said, check out this test. It's fun. And it's actually really well designed too. Mm. Cause I was really impressed with the user experience of the test. Yeah. It was beautifully made, you know, really like well designed. And a friend of mine re responded <laughs> kind of laughing saying, I, I designed that site. It's so funny. <laughs> it's amazing. What yeah. a small, interesting world. <laughs> And I think that's what's really cool about this world we live in yeah. as digital mad, being surrounded by all these cool people doing cool things. Cause not, you know, we're not all just, you know, uh, selling stuff on Amazon or mm. job shipping. Some people in this community are also designing really cool stuff like Quinn. Uh, she's with Zeta labs, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and she, you know, makes these beautiful, awesome sites like, like this one. It's really cool. Yeah. Just seeing how everyone's work is kind of, yeah intermingling with each other yeah i like it so uh today what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down not only what mine and kristen is and the pros and cons of each but also kind of give you guys an overview maybe some of the other ones uh, but one thing that you had brought up that i thought was really interesting is that most people don't change and i agree with that because uh when people were commenting most of them said whatever there is is and they said it's been that forever 
one of my beliefs is not only is it because it's kind of a core part of us and that's kind of hard to change anyways, I don't think most people are doing that much self-development and changing themselves. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, having an awareness of what your tendencies are gives you more of the power and freedom to change. So for example, yeah, when you're aware that you operate more from a thinking space or an intuitive space, whatever, you can give power to the other side and be like, and open up your perspective more. So yeah, you're right. I think without the awareness of how we are, it's harder to change. Okay. I like it. So what was your personality type? Um, so I don't, would it help to go through the four letters first and to see what each of those tendencies yeah. are? Well, well, so or for, should we should I go over mine first? Just, just say what the letters are. I'll say mine and then okay. we'll go over what it means. Cool. So I am an ENFP hundred percent. Like when I do the tests, you can have, um, each letter can be a various degree on the scale. Mine is super strongly ENFP, which is extrovert, intuitive, feeling, and perceiving. Okay, and I'm an ENTJ, which is also extrovert, so we're both extroverted. What is N? Uh, intuitive. Intuitive, what does that mean? That means that you take in information through your intuition, so you take in more conceptual than physical. And what, what would physical be? Like, What would the opposite of that be then? Mm, sensing. So if you're a sensor, it's like you take in information through the five senses primarily so okay. it's primarily yeah. okay uh, let's definitely dive into that actually you know what let's, yeah. let's dive into that right now so okay i'm n right now that mm -hmm. is intuitive intuitive what does it actually mean yeah so the way i think of it so what it is the second letter intuiting versus sensing it's how you take in information from the outside world so it's how you actually perceive the world and i like to think of this just as how like how do you best what information do you trust the most? Some people are really into, you know, they believe it if they see it. So they, if they don't see it with their five senses, if they don't see it, touch it, hear it, taste it, whatever, it's not real. It's not their first thing to trust. Whereas some people live more in the world of concept and vision and, you know, they're more idealistic, they're abstract. So intuitors are living more in the world of ideas, whereas sensors are living more in the world of practicalities. Okay. So I'm guessing that we're opposite on this one. You're guessing we're opposite on this one. Yeah. I'm an N. Really? You're Hardcore. both N? We're both so we're N. We're both N? Okay. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Ns are visionaries. And Johnny, the thing is, you may be more in the middle of the scale. Uh -huh. You may you might have a little bit more of that, um, I don't know. So, so sensing people are generally concrete thinkers. They notice details. They're really practical. Um, so it actually surprises me that you are, I would have guessed you to be an S, in fact. Wow, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Kristen was nice to make some notes here. So I did have notes. About it. Well, actually, you know, first... <laughs> Let's jump back to introvert, extrovert. I think okay. a, lot, a lot of people think introverts are bad or it's not good to be an introvert. Right. I think most people don't actually understand what it means, right? Exactly. I think it's a big misconception in society. I mean, I think our society values extroverts. We really value this being out around people, like all the big leaders. It makes sense The people that are really on, well, we think a lot of the people that are on stages making a difference in the world are extroverts, but a lot of times they're really introverts. The real meaning of these two terms is how you get your energy. So that doesn't mean that extroverts like to be around people and introverts don't. It just means that extroverts gain energy in social situations. So they go out around people and they actually recharge. Whereas introverts, they may well be great with people. They might love social situations, but they need alone time to recharge their batteries. I can definitely see that. And I also yeah. think introverts often do really well in a one-on-one -on -one situation or a private mm. group, while extroverts might kind of blossom when we when we're around a big crowd exactly uh for me i'm definitely an extrovert because i like being around people yeah uh, it's i feed off of it but with a caveat where it depends on who it is mm -hmm. and if they are i don't know if there's anything to do with the test but just in general if they have like positive energy or kind of like negativity energy mm -hmm. so if i'm around people who are having a very scarcity mentality uh, or they're unhappy I really feel that and like mm. it, it drains the crap out of me and, and I need to be alone for a while. Yeah. But if I'm around people with positive energy, they're happy to be there, they're open-minded, uh, they have the abundance mindset, then I really feel feed off and, I, and it, it's great. That's Yeah. And that's a lot of your intuitive qualities coming in because the ends, you really are perceiving more energy. Like how you take in information isn't necessarily always through the physical world, but it's the energetic world. And that's what you're talking about. Like that might sound woo woo or spiritual or something, but you're, you feel people's energy. And if that's draining or if it's not in alignment, you don't really feed off that as well as if. Yeah. So maybe that's why I am an N. Exactly. Okay. So if I was the other one, which, which would be what? Uh, sensing. S, sensing. Yeah. What would that be then? Mm, 
Well, first of all, all of the all of the qualities combine together. So it's not so much just the E and the S, but it's also your thinking versus feeling and your judging versus perceiving. Okay. So this gets a little bit more into something deeper in the Myers-Briggs, which is the eight cognitive functions. And so essentially there's six. Oh, wait, wait. I'm not an ENTJ. I'm ESTJ. You- That's why. <laughs> Okay. I thought you would be an ESTJ. Okay. 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 But, you know, again, you do display a lot of the qualities of intuitors, what you just described with the energy. Okay. So, ESTJ. I I think this was exactly what mine was. But, um, yeah, ESTJ, which is the executive personality. Okay. Also known (laughs) as the Darth Vader personality. No way. Yeah, there's different tests for that. Uh, I'll link to both of those kind of screenshots in the show notes uh, Mm. episode 141 if you guys want to check it out uh, as well as t- to this test but yeah i am estj and you are what i am enfp which i believe is the campaigner enfp yeah and it's really fun because our types are quite different johnny okay. so it'll be cool to kind of look at some of those differences okay and strengths I like it. and weaknesses and i do yeah. like that they put um that they have a I guess a name for, for everything as well. Yeah. You know, like the commander or pr- the protagonist. Do you know what yours were? I think it's the campaigner. Open. Can you open mine? Yeah. Yeah. It's nice because it gives some context to it. So you can really put these human qualities, you know, with the personality type. Yeah. And what they do too is they, they show you what, like who is, is that? As Should in like, him, yeah. so campaigner? That's me, yeah. E-N-F-P. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, we're going to pull these two up right now so we can kind of go over them. Mm-hmm. And so the reason why we're having this kind of different episode today, if people are listening, they're like, what, is, what the hell does this have to do <laughs> with traveling like a boss, being an entrepreneur? I think when you understand these things, overall, I mean, it's great for things like networking or uh, developing relationships, um, partnering people to you know to create a business together, but even just making friendships, knowing knowing like what you like what what you'll stand for but mm-hmm. i also think this knowing this these kind of things and developing yourself will help you ultimately in your business as well as hurt you in your business and i think that is one thing i wanted to dive into after we explain all this i want us to really kind of dive in deep and, on our weaknesses as well mm, definitely okay so you are a campaigner enfp and what does that really mean yeah so So again, it's the extrovert, the intuitive, the intuitor. The last two, feeling versus thinking, those just simply represent how we make decisions. So it's how we process the information that we've taken in through the S or the N, the sensing or intuiting. So I'm a feeler, which basically means I make decisions from my heart, from my values. Thinkers decide things with their head. They're very logical. And the last letter, the P, it's perceiving. So this is sort of a lifestyle preference thing. It's how we implement all of this other info in our life, how we actually show up in the world. And it's perceiving versus judging. So I am a P, you're a J. Mm. Perceivers are spontaneous, flexible, go with the flow. Judgers really value having schedule and structure. They're more planned and organized. Okay. So, so let's yeah. definitely break all that, all those things down, but to kind of summarize, to summarize, yeah. um, as a campaigner, they are a true free spirit, mm-hmm. uh, life of the party. Um, but let's yeah, see. oh, I can tell you all about my yeah. strengths and weaknesses with ENFP. It's we're great at we're great at inspiring people. Mm. We are the life of the party, but we really connect in you know a really emotional, human way with people. Mm-hmm. We're sort of this common ENFPs are are visionaries, and we're great with ideas. We're always coming up with new ideas. We're creative and. We're basically like we come up with these ideas and we inspire other people to get on board. Okay. So these are some of the strengths. But- I also see that you guys have a lot of compassion, mm. uh, lots of emotion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys are very independent, <laughs> but more than stability and security, you guys crave creativity and freedom. Absolutely. And I can see that with you. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Very emotional, very you know empathetic. Generally, a lot of ENFPs are able to relate with others and... Um, yeah, those as far as strengths, and 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 a lot of imagination. The the weak. Should I get into the weaknesses? <laughs> yeah. So first, uh. we can go over the type of um, so campaigners you may know. So people with the same personality as Kristen hmm. uh, that are famous, or would be like Robert Downey Jr., also known as Iron Man, <laughs> Will Smith, Robin Williams, Drew Barrymore, uh, Russell Brand, nice. Karen uh, Tarantino, Meg Ryan, Kelly Clarkson. 
Uh, Michael and, Scott, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and a whole a bunch of other people here. Uh, Peta uh, from the Hunger Games. <laughs> Carrie Bradshaw. Carrie, yeah, okay. Very so cool. So you'll see a lot of people that are sort really of Wonka on as well. stage. Yeah, a lot of actors, actresses, um, which, yeah, anyway. Okay. So let's talk about the downsides then. Yeah, so ENFPs tend to have a lot of ideas and be creative and inspiring, but we, we tend to be bad with follow through yep. because we're really, really bored by the mundane, tedious details that it takes to put a plan into action. And it's also really hard for us to choose one thing to move forward with because we get yep. FOMO. We want to do everything, touch all the lives, change all the world, you know, become involved with every movement that we get paralysis analysis and I have experiences. So <laughs> let's be completely honest with each other on this podcast no hard feelings let's really dig in deep and and just call each other out okay okay so i've known you for now how long at least three years okay and these last three years what i've really admired about you is you're always excited about new things you know you're very caring you know you're fun to be around but the downsides is you're always jumping like literally every time i talk to you you're like oh i'm doing this project now i'm doing this now now i want to do this now i want to be this and nothing gets done it's true. Well, everything gets done to, you know, 40% or 60%, yeah. but nothing gets done to to that 100% mark mm. where it can become like a new stream of income or mm. a real business. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? It's been a problem. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Finishing has been my biggest struggle. And um, what I've noticed is, you know, I've been sustaining myself on freelancing and it's been easier for me to finish something when I know someone else is relying on me than it has been because when I'm just on my own starting these solo ventures, you know, podcasts, stores, Udemy courses, coaching business, like it's been more difficult for me to give myself that motivation because I get so many ideas and I want to help so many different people. And another weakness is that I get really excited talking to other people about what they're doing and I get into their thing and I think I want to try that. I want to help them with this or I want to become this. So, um, yeah, it's been hard to get myself, you know, out of that freelancing cycle and into my own business because you do, you, you have to choose one thing. Like, you have for at least a couple months, you have to just focus on that business if it's going to make it off the ground. So everything you just said uh, is absolutely correct. According to 16 personalities, <laughs> poor practical skills, uh, follow through, all right? oh, man. Uh, find it difficult to focus, uh, overthink ideas, yeah, overthink get stressed too. easily, yeah. which you definitely do. do. tend towards anxiety. And Highly stress. emotional, <laughs> super are. But also, this is actually really interesting. It says independent to a fault mm. because you hate getting micromanaged. You hate have heavy-handed rules. And true. it's one of those things where if you can't be your own boss and you're not willing to have a boss, that's mm. a really hard place to be. Exactly. And right now, just so everyone watching this podcast knows and myself, I'm really transitioning out of this right now. Like living in Chiang Mai has been a huge catalyst for me because I'm around people who are taking themselves seriously and starting businesses that matter. And I've gone through a lot of personal development the last few years, getting in, diving into yoga, becoming a yoga teacher and a retreat leader and a coach. And like, I've been doing this mindset transformation right along with people I work with. And so it's gotten to a point where for me, I've said enough with these weaknesses. I'm really aware of the, you know, aspects of my personality that shy away from commitment and details and things like that. And it's, this is why it's so important for us to shine light on who we are and know these things about ourselves. Cause I can say, you know, enough with that. I'm going to override my natural tendencies and do these things that I have to do because it matters enough to me to have a business, you know, and I want to be able to share my gifts with the world in a really powerful way. And that's not going to happen by being the way I've been in the past, which is kind of spread all over the place. I like it. Yeah. I, I like that commitment. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so I've been putting together the Nomad Summit 2017 and we've been looking for speakers and we've had a couple applicants uh, this year, I really wanted to have more female speakers mm -hmm. to have good balance. And also because the nomad community now isn't just men who are like developers or, you know, e even, you know, just doing like e-commerce. Now it's it's really everyone and there's more and more women. So I really wanted to kind of represent that. Mm -hmm. So I've been really trying to find great women, female speakers. And we've had two that submitted applications. You know, they're really excited to come speak. And I asked, you know, can you give me some bullet points on what you're going to speak about and also a video of you speaking somewhere, just so I can have an idea. And I'm pretty sure they were both this personality type, mm. ENFP, because they were super all over the place. I couldn't get them to just send me 
these two things, like <laughs> five bullet points and a video. That's it. That's yeah. all I asked. And it took like five emails back and forth over like weeks to get that. Mm. And then I told them, you know, kind of like what we were looking for. And I said, you know, the format of it is to, you know, with like to end it with some actionable items mm. for, you know, for uh, the attendees because that's what they want. They don't want just like a inspiration or a dream. They want something they can do. Yeah. And one girl actually came back saying, you know, I really thought about this the last two weeks. And I know that if I, I don't say did what you say, but if I, if I tailored my talk to uh, your, your requirements, your expectations, then uh, I would have a better chance of getting selected. And I really want to be on stage, but you know, it wouldn't feel right for my soul <laughs> to, you know, to do this. So I wanted, I want to do this talk instead. And the talks you wanted to do, it, it's, it's like, I'm like looking at, it, I'm thinking, I don't know how anyone will benefit from this besides, you know, maybe opening up their mind a bit and thinking like, oh yeah, what about this? What about this? What about this? But from my, like, E, was it? E and F- STJ. STJ, like, point of view, I'm like, I don't see how anyone could take action from this. Hmm. What, what do you, like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, I'm not sure specifically what the top, the topic of the, her talk was going to be, but it sounds like it was something a little bit more, like, I would less- say flu flu. I, I, I don't, I don't yeah. know what, like, <laughs> and it was literally both women mm. had, they don't know each other, but they're very similar talks. Mm. Uh, the other one, she sent me a talk that she's actually done at the Women's Awakening Conf conference or mm. something. And I'm watching it and I'm like, I know it makes people feel good to be that, to be surrounded by other women who are empowering themselves and letting go of stress. And I know that's very needed, but I'm, I'm listening to this entire 20 minute talk and I'm like, I learned nothing from this besides mm-hmm. just be free and just enjoy, enjoy yourself. Yeah. Oh, it's so interesting you say this. Like this is something really important right now and something that's been on my mind a lot with my work is we need to have a bridge between this more spiritual conscious practices and actionability and putting it into your life and business because there's such a divide I think between both of those sides you know we have a lot of the people who are yoga teachers or spiritual practitioners or healers and coaches and they're really talking about these really high level ideas how we can awaken how we can become more connected to ourselves but for people on the other side who are you know maybe in business mode they're in hustle mode they they want to feel more connected to themselves and their purpose but they're not relating to this language and there's no actionability and so like that's kind of what I'm really working to do is is help be that bridge and, and you know people that are doing these talks they need to be able to bring it down and have really tangible actions like you do A B and C these are actual practices you can start tomorrow you can go home and do this and that's going to bring you closer to this level of inspiration I'm talking I like about because I really do think that the way that we do it as in like the you know the very kind of like male mindset business person mm. we are missing a lot of a lot of these things that can help our lives as well. So let's actually jump into that. Uh, first, let's see, let's briefly talk about what my personality type is, yeah. and then I want you to just rip me apart. Okay, okay let's do it. So let's talk about <laughs> the, the the positives first. So I'm the executive personality. Uh, what what are we? Okay, so from what I understand, I haven't read through your type on here, but you know, an ESTJ is going to be someone who's a builder who's an organizer who's a who's an executive who's able to make shit happen both see the big vision and make it happen and bring it together and i'm guessing that you're a personality type would be really good at delegating and building teams setting up systems and then setting up the people to put that into place that's exactly what i do it's, it's funny when i read this i didn't even realize how much of a community organizer builder i am mm. and then my buddy chris pointed out he's like dude you have you, you run like five facebook groups you have not only the Nomad Summit Conference, but you have the weekly coffee club meetups. Yeah. You have this partnership of job uh, shippers now. You have, like, you're the one that organizes the camping trips. <laughs> you're the one that organizes right. everything. Yeah. <clears throat> and I never really knew why I did that. I just liked doing it. Mm. Yeah. It's It seems like that's your, you know, your extrovert and your, you know, you like to you like to show up in the real world. You like to make things happen. You're, you're, you're a sensor. You're a thinker. So you're able to... Um, yeah, and you like structure. So you like to make things happen. You don't just have these ideas that you think would be nice one day if they happen, but your, you know, the J aspect of your personality is going to put these into play and create the schedule and the order that needs to actually get it done. And I think it drives me nuts that other people aren't doing it. <laughs> so I just started a Facebook group called Check My Startups. And I didn't want to do it because I'm not involved in the startup scene. The only reason why I did it is because people would 
always message me or I'll meet them in person saying, Hey, you know, I'm in Chiang Mai, I'm part of a startup, you know, how do I meet, how can I meet other startup founders or, you know, people that work in that space? And I'm like, Oh, no, just check, you know, one of the groups. Yeah. And they would always end up leaving after a week or two because they couldn't meet other startup people. They could only meet nomads. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I know there's a lot of people here. I just like, why isn't there a group? And I, <laughs> I got so frustrated. So I just made a group and I'm delegating the whole thing out where I created the group. I invited the first, you know, how many, you know, 20 people. It's grown to over a hundred in just like three days. Wow. Which means there's a hundred people in Chiang Mai who are interested in this. I'm going to set up the first meeting and then I'm going to say, you know, you guys are now in charge. You guys take care of it. I want, I want very little to do with this because yeah. that's not my strength or my, you know, what excites me. But I just was so frustrated that nobody else had just taken the, you know, 20 minutes to do this, yeah. even though it's so easy and so logical. Right. Yeah. You took the initiative. You just wanted to see it happen. So you wanted to see some, see this out there. So you just did it. You're like, somebody else run it. Yeah. So, th- you know, I guess those are my strengths, but yeah. what are my weaknesses? I, I know there's a lot of them. Yeah. Well, you know, ooh, strengths and weaknesses. We have a, oh, a section you know on here. Yeah. <laughs> Should we actually kind of uh, say who are some of the executives oh, that we might right, know? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know who that is. <laughs> John D. Rockefeller. Yeah. Judge Judy. Mm-hmm. Frank Sinatra. James Monroe, some of these people I don't know. Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, Sarah Michelle Geller, Dwight Schrute of The Office. So for okay. comparing Office, I'm the Michael Scott, you're the Dwight Schrute, Johnny. Okay. And Claire <laughs> Dumphy from Modern Family. Okay. That Anna girl from Lost. Mm. Rob Stark from Game of Thrones. Okay, that's enough. Nice. It's kind of fun. Okay. I'm seeing that. So strengths and weaknesses. So <laughs> we know some of the strengths already. I'm <clears throat> dedicated, strong willed, yeah. direct, honest, loyal. I enjoy creating art. Uh, order i'm a good organizer yeah but what are my yeah. my downsides before i even look i want to just you know see if i can okay. get them my guess would be that as an estj you might have a little more trouble being flexible and spontaneous and open to things changing um you might also have you know a bit of a controlling or stubborn mindset as far as the way you want things to be so it might you know, that might come into teamwork. Like you might have to consciously be a little bit more open-minded and, you know, accepting for things to change or flow in different ways. Because, you know, you definitely, you're someone that's going to have great ideas and great visions and amazing business plans, but it might not be as easy for others to like inflict their opinions on you. So when I first read this, I thought this was the best. Why isn't everyone (laughs) like this? Oh, there you go. Because it clearly said like, you are the model (laughs) citizens. And by reading it, I can see you know, even without me being part of this, I'm like, you know what? These people are good for society. They're good for the community. They add value to the world. Mm. So why would anyone be anything else? Mm. And then I was reading the weaknesses and what you had just brought up, being that inflexible, you know, having, you know, having everything want to done a certain way is actually a downside because even though, so the reason why I want it done this way is because I know that it's the best way. (laughs) All yeah. right? And I'm like, why wouldn't you do it the most efficient or the best way? But here's the two problems is there's that unknown of what else could also be the best way or what could possibly be even better in the future or what can add like an, an a different value. And I think the example they gave, yeah. which really touched me, was inefficiencies in like route planning <laughs> mm. where it drives me nuts if people are late or if we take a longer route than is necessary. Mm. And it just, like, if we get lost or we drive the wrong direction or we go a long path, it just drives me nuts because I know I'm like, why are we wasting gas time? <laughs> we're getting there, you know, we're wasting daylight. We're getting there uh, later than we should. All these things, right? Yeah. And they explain, they're like, well, instead of looking at it that way, if you look at it from the other side, someone, you know, who, someone who's the opposite personality might think, how nice it is that we got to see this whole new <laughs> like path. You know, yeah. we saw like, we saw these cool things that we wouldn't have seen. We got to spend extra time together. You know, like there's, you know, yeah. maybe like this other opportunity kind of came up or like we got a, we had a detour. We had this magical journey together. Totally. Everything happens for a reason. And people, yeah, people like me, you know, peas wouldn't understand like your, how you'd be so, you know, how, how you couldn't see that this is happening for a reason. And yeah, anyway, so maybe, you know, ESTJ, you might have more of a difficulty with just enjoying the journey as it unfolds. You can be so caught in your idea of how it should be. And I laugh because even what you said in the beginning, 
this is clearly the best personality type. Why would anyone be anything different? Like that's a blind spot weakness because obviously there's a spectrum of, of types and you read every type and you can see how they're needed in society. So, you know, your type, just that initial inability to, to maybe like see that could be a blind spot weakness. Yeah. yeah. And one other thing that I brought up was, you know, we are more focused on traditional values and also things that have been proven to work mm-hmm. while, other personalities, and I'm assuming yours, are focused on, like, you know, I guess more liberal policies, like what, like, maybe not, like, maybe, you know, something new, something like a different or better way to do it, mm. even though it's not been scientifically proven yet. Mm. So, like, for me, I'm like, you know what, I do see the value in that, because if we always did everything that we already know works, and that works well today and has in the past... There'd be no real innovation. You know, there'd be no real change. We would just be stuck exactly where we are today and there'd be no growth in the future. Right. Yeah, exactly. These more intuitive feeling types and perceiving are a little bit more, we're in the world of possibility. We live in the realm of what doesn't exist yet. Whereas you may re- you may dwell in the realm of, you know, what works, what's been proven to work and how you can improve on that. Um, but you might need a little bit of outside help. And this is why it's great, you know, to have collaborations and other perspectives from other people that can help, you know, open up those possibilities or you can develop practices that help you develop your intuitive side, your, you know, perceiving side, et cetera. Yeah. And I, I think like even, let's say like with business, I'm like, follow something that already works. Like that has a blueprint. Someone else has already shown you how to do it. Just do that. Like stop overthinking it. Mm. Don't think outside the box. Just freaking do it. The reason why I believe that's the best way is because I know it works. Mm. But then at the same time, I guess from your side of it, you're like, well, you know, like what if I don't want to do that? I want to, I want to do it my own way. Yeah. And I can, now I, I guess I can see how that could benefit the world and yourself because you might do it that way and you might end up being a multimillionaire because you just did it differently than everyone else. But I think if you're talking about percentages, by following the proven path that already works, you have a much higher chance of it working because it's proven mm. versus by doing it kind of the free flow way, you have a very small chance of making it way better. Mm. I see what you're saying. Yeah. What just came up for me was there's also this, this aspect of because we are the way we are, like, even though following that proven blueprint might work, it might not actually fulfill me as an ENFP. So I might be more personally fulfilled by living outside the box and creating something that doesn't exist yet, doing it in a new way. And because that's my tendency, I might succeed at that more than someone like you and who, you know, who wants to follow more of a blueprint. Like, just because that feels more personally fulfilling to me. And I might not actually be able to succeed at doing the proven blueprint. So, you know, these personality aspects, they really determine how fulfilled we'll feel doing certain things or having certain kind of paths and relationships. I see that. So another downside of my personality is being very judgmental (laughs) and having very strong convictions on what is right, wrong, or socially acceptable. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, I judge people a lot. <laughs> I like, I'm like, this guy's a freaking idiot, you know. Um, <laughs> or you know, like, like, why does this guy have dreadlocks? Why is he dressed like that? <sighs> and you know, it's 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 weird, you know, because I, I know that I would be happier if I just didn't care what other people did. Mm. And I know it's not even really my place. Like, why why should I care if a guy has dreadlocks or not? Or even I don't even like guys with long hair. <laughs> and I'm just like, why do you have long hair? You know, like, it's not practical. Like, it's, you know, it's like, you can't, like, I don't know. It, it's, and I know yeah. there's no reason why I should care mm. if a guy chooses to have long hair or even a beard, like a long beard. Yeah. It's, but it's like, in my mind, I'm just like, no, like, that's not practical. Don't do that. Yeah. It sounds like you, you're you really clear on your values and the like the right way to be. And not only that, but possibly because of your extroversion, you easily project that out onto others. And so, yeah, you just like have the idea of what works in your world. And um, yeah, yeah, which, you know, I feel like the word judgmental tends to have a lot of stigma around it, but it's just simply that, like you're projecting your values on others and that is what it is. I'm curious also about the emotional aspect. You know, apparently ESTJs have more difficulty expressing their emotion. Do you feel that you do? I have no emotions. <laughs> All right. So it's clearly not a problem. Next question. <laughs> Emotion, what? I have never cried. So, um, yeah, this has actually been something that I've been working on. Uh, actually, since I've taken this test, 
or whatever it is, uh, I started trying to communicate my emotions more. Mm. So I just started dating someone recently. Nothing serious yet. You know, it's been a few weeks. But I decided after taking this, I was like, you know what? Maybe we should communicate. So I asked her, I was like, hey, um, do you want to know what, you know, that I'm moving next month? Yeah. <laughs> And she was so angry at me because I think she actually subscribes to my email list. So she saw that I mailed out like my 2017 travel plans, which included me moving out of the country next month or like not, not next, yeah. next month, like six weeks from now. Yeah. And then I having all these plans of not coming back into Chiang Mai for like a year and she's planning on staying here. Mm. So she was like, I'm so glad you brought this up because I was about to stop seeing you, you know, thinking that like you weren't serious about this and you just didn't want to make it work. And I said to her, I was like, look, to be honest, it had nothing to do with you at all. I just didn't really, you know, I didn't think about it, mm. you know? And, you know, maybe that's a bad thing, right? Mm. I mean, it's interesting because you, like, it sounds like it wasn't even necessarily an emotional conversation. You just hadn't communicated, like, logistical plans to her. Do you think that was because deep, like, underneath that, there is the emotional aspect yeah. and a little bit of avoidance I, of, like... Yeah, yeah. I have, yeah. No, I have no problems with talking about logistics i yeah. knew that the reason why i didn't bring it up is i knew that that would bring up the emotional talk of where are we in this relationship yeah. is it a relationship or are we just dating is this casual yeah you know um and i didn't want to i it was me wanting to avoid that conversation i think that's pretty normal isn't it like <laughs> pretty sure i've done that too okay I don't, I don't know i mean i i think yeah but but again it might be due to you know if you are less developed in this emotional intelligence area and able, you know, comfort with having these emotionally charged discussions, conversations, it might, might be something that you would just naturally avoid. And like you said, you didn't even really think about bringing it up. It's not like you were consciously avoiding it and pushing it away maybe, but it just, you're just not drawn to having these kind of emotional talks. I think of it as if everything is okay now, why tip the boat and like talk about our feelings or our future when we that we don't know what's going to happen yet. Yeah. And I think that's another thing where maybe as someone who thinks more about kind of like the, I don't know, I, I don't even know what the word is, but for me, I only think what are the facts? The facts are we've been dating for X amount of days. It's not, you know, it's, you know, we have, you know, we're not a couple yet. We're not this yet. We have like, we have uh, options like, you know, when I go, then we can decide, you know, you know, do you want, do you want to join or not? And to me, it's like almost like a business transaction, which is bad. You know, now I think about it. Uh, for what is for her, she's like, why can't we just talk about like, you know, your feelings? Like, mm. are you, you know, are you, you know, do you see a future for us? And I'm like, I don't know because I can't see in the future. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It's, it is one of those tricky things. Like, and I think, especially with relationships, it can be, uh, yeah, when do you have that conversation? At what point do you, you know, and you do, it's, it, it is about meeting halfway in the middle because you are a thinking personality. So like you said, you use logic to make decisions. You're pretty, and I think I saw you're pretty high on the thinking spectrum. So, you know, you give priority to logic, to pr to reason, to these numbers. Like we've been dating X amount of weeks. It doesn't make sense to have this conversation until five and a half weeks. We're only three weeks. Like, and that weakness can be a little bit of that black and white mindset where you're not, you know, maybe taking her feelings into account. And well, according to the survey, it <laughs> says we are stubborn, firm belief with our rightness and can quickly damage more sensitive partners, fragile feelings. Mm. Which yeah. I, I think is could definitely, definitely true. see that happening. Yeah. Which is really important for you to, that's why it's so great for you to be aware of this because you can see that this would be a potential blind spot and you won't go spend your whole life crashing through relationships and just damaging them and wondering what keeps happening. You know, you'll actually have the tools to say, wow, it's probably because I'm approaching this with a really logical mindset and I'm, you know, feeling like I'm so right and stubborn with this. I have to consciously, it might be really uncomfortable. In fact, it will be to let go, to say, you know, I think maybe there's another way this could be let's try this more, like, let's have this conversation now, even though that doesn't feel right in your mind. Yeah. So thinking back, I think the lack of communication is is what really hurt me and Rissa's relationship. Mm. Is she would tell me something and I would think way logically and just look for a solution and be like, okay, well, we'll do X, Y, Z. And she's like, no, can we like talk about this? I'm like, why we have the solution this is the best solution let's just do that yeah. so i think if nothing else i think i've learned now from that <clears throat> experience but also now taking this test that i need to commu communicate my emotions mm. which 
I didn't see, I saw, I literally saw zero value of doing before. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why I've always avoided doing it. But now I can see probably, you know, we got to meet in the middle, right? Yeah. And you know, a great place to start with that is just start by creating a space for your partner to express their emotions, you know, and that's, that literally just takes listening and reflecting. So, and, and that's, that can be a little bit easier than being like, okay, I have to suddenly share all my feelings. Just, I guarantee if you give your partner space to share, half the time that's going to heal what's going on because people just want to be heard. And it's probably going to ease you into wanting to share your feelings because what they say will bring up stuff for you and you'll already be in that that space, you know? Okay, I like that. It's a great tip. Oh, Appreciate thanks. that. Yeah. All okay. the thinker types out there. Just... There you go. So maybe this is why we need people like you in our lives. Oh, yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So any other downsides that you want to like you know regardless of what it says on the screen Mm, tell me like what do you think i can improve on Mm, yeah i mean again like we've known each other for a couple of years and i see you yeah being super successful in your business in all the projects you go in 100 percent drive like you make shit happen i think you know possibly slowing down and just feeling a little bit more into the journey and maybe like the purpose behind everything and kind of dwelling a little bit more in that realm of the conceptual and your feelings and really like, yeah, I think that could, that could help bring even more power to what you're doing because really people are going to, re- and because you are so, um, you know, public and, and vocal and sharing every, everything you're doing with your work, really bringing more of that emotional human element to it, I think is going to make your work more attractive, more magnetizing. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah. So do you think, it would be beneficial if I had more empathy for people who were not successful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think empathy is always a key tool in connecting and growing. Like empathy is a yes, always. Um, yeah. I always think it's a no. I think empathy is a complete waste of time. <laughs> All and right. I, yeah. And I think empathy holds people back because if they aren't, you know, like, let's say they're not, they're not doing what it takes to become successful mm-hmm. instead of, all, you know, everyone's saying, stop wasting your freaking time, do this, you know, get to work, stop talking about feelings, you know, just get to work. Yeah. You, you, they will find people who are will be like, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it, mm. you know, maybe this isn't your bliss, you know, maybe you should, you know, like, don't think about it, like, you know, let's go do some yoga, let's go, whatever. Yeah. And I think those are the people who give them an outlet of saying like, oh yeah, maybe I don't have to work so hard, maybe, maybe it's not my fault. While people like me are like, it is your fault. Get to freaking work. Okay. I see what you're saying. It can be sort of an excuse if people are coddled and like, oh, it's okay. You didn't make it. Um, yeah, for sure. And, and again, like, hmm, I'm not sure if that is, I, maybe that it does qualify as empathy. I do think people need this more tough approach that you get, that you bring. They need to hear what's not being said, like what most people won't tell them that's valuable. And a lot of people won't speak the truth like that. They won't tell you what you need to hear. So, keep bringing that to people. And I think, um, but yeah, just finding a way to blend that with a little bit more, you know, maybe empathy is not the word, but just like really, really hearing their situation and how they're feeling and, and how can like, what kind of tough love is going to reach them the most? Because a lot of people will just sort of shut down from that. Yeah. I can can definitely see that. I'm almost thinking, do you think that I personally need to, you know, have more compassion or be more empathy or can I just, keep being you know this kind of strict asshole and then have people like you in the, in the world but rebalance that out mm. and say like yeah you know yeah you know you should listen to johnny some of johnny's points but also remember that you know you are a special being and you know what, whatever <laughs> you're you would a say. special snowflake yeah and just do some sun salutations and some breathing exercises i mean yeah that's a good point because we you know we really can show up in the world best when we're in line with um our most natural way of being obviously need to shine light on those blind spots and make shifts where needed. But like if your strength really is bringing that tough love, bringing the practical advice, helping people shake them up and wake them up. um, Yeah. I can see how that's, that's a powerful thing. And then just, yeah. Bringing in other people that, that have the more compassion. Cause part of me is like, yeah, I don't really want to see you lose that sharpness and lose that tough love and like kind of be this compassionate, you know, bring this compassion that maybe isn't really, what you're feeling in the moment for that person if they're sort of being lazy like you know it's not you to (laughs) encourage that hey guys if you're listening to this right now and you're broke and you're not making any money (laughs) it's okay (laughs) i still love you you're still special snowflake 
It's your own fault. <laughs> Let's switch places. Yeah. If you're broke right now, it's your fault. Do something about it. Get off your butt and get to work. I, yeah, I, I, I don't think I could be that guy because I, I just, it just feels icky to me even saying that. Yeah, yeah. No, be you. You got to do you. You got to do you. Okay, all right. I think this yeah. is this is good insight for me as well, just going through this. Like, we don't have to fix anything about ourselves. Really, we show up best in the world when we embody these qualities to their highest potential, I really do think. And a lot of that is bringing people in that can help round out those things. So for example, for me, ENFP, I've just, ta- I've just realized in my life, I'm going to do best when I collaborate with people who are J's and T's. I need collaboration with judges and thinkers that can help get the details done. And that means eventually delegating, et cetera, you know, the tasks that I don't want to do. And for you, it might mean having people in your life and your world who are more empathetic and compassionate and can A, make you feel more comfortable with those qualities and B, maybe can, I don't know, work with you or work with other people you're working with. I don't know. But yeah, just owning owning who you are. And side, side note, like anyone who takes this personality test, it's, I, I shouldn't say personality test, but who, who goes through the 16 personalities, like you'll read your typing and you'll identify with it so hardcore. It's so deep and it speaks to so many aspects of your cognitive processing, your emotional processing that it's, it's really, really helpful. And I think that's a testament to the Myers-Briggs type indicator that it's, um, that you just feel so much resonance when you read it. Everyone does. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Um, and I and I think what you said at first is, I think that's pretty kind of spot on, where I think it's good for us to recognize our weaknesses and do things to develop and, and you know overcome those because it's never good to have weaknesses for no reason, right? And we, yeah. could, we could become better people. Well, at least be aware that it is a weakness. But I also agree with what we just said where maybe instead of us trying to change into another personality type that we aren't and try to force ourselves to become that person maybe we should just focus on the strengths that we do have now Mm. and say let's just keep doing more of that let's Mm. triple down on that strength whether it's for me organizing or for you (laughs) feeling and creating and being a there's something people say about uh, <laughs> ENFPs is we basically barf rainbows and unicorns. So barfing rainbows everywhere. <laughs> like the world needs us to be like the strongest version of ourselves, not a watered down version of ourselves. Like the world needs Johnny to be the best ESTJ because that is what you do. And that's like going to bring out these, you know, qualities for people who need it. Yeah. I like yeah. it. So if you guys need a hug or cuddle, Go to Kristen. I would love to hug you and cuddle you right now. <laughs> if you guys need me to slap you until you get to work, come to me. <laughs> exactly. Which I utilize that offer a lot, actually. It's really good. Okay. I like it. So <laughs> uh, any kind of parting thoughts on all this? Yeah. Um, just, you know, really taking time to, what I'd say once you take the personality typing t- quiz on 16 personalities, just do some journaling. I really think that journaling free writing, you know, writing about your tendencies, how you resonate or don't resonate with this. It's a good way to gain self-knowledge. Like self-knowledge is so key as a foundation to everything like business relationships. The more clear you get on who you are and how you best show up in the world, that's when you're going to attract the partner that's right for you. So when you're going to attract job opportunities, business opportunities that are going to actually thrive because you're going to be in the right place. You're not going to be trying to force something to work that's never going to work. So just keep practicing self-knowledge and journaling and talking about this stuff with people. And yeah, see, you know, spread this stuff with your friends. People will be really interested to take this test and then you can chat about this and go deeper with it. Yeah, I never like it. By the way, I want to make it clear that six, we're not sponsored by 16personalities.com. <laughs> Uh, but if we they, should be. <laughs> yeah, I wish we were. Uh, but even if we were, I, I would still have this. So yeah. it's one of those things where if they had an affiliate program, I would have happily signed up for it and told you to go there. But because they don't, and it's good content, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk have an episode on this anyways. And I think this is that abundance mindset I want everyone to start, you know, really and emb- you know embodying is if something is of good value, you should absolutely go out of your way to share it, whether it has you whether you get paid for it or not but if there is a way to get paid for it you should absolutely do that because it's a scarcity mentality thinking that just because you're getting paid for it means that you know somehow it's not as valuable mm, yeah, that makes sense agree i think this is a great resource it's one of the best i've seen online and super cute and creative pictures to make it extra yeah just it's just fun and it's designed great by zeta labs yeah Z-E-D-A, i think labs.com because you'll find a ton of myers-briggs tests online but um it's really nice to have one that's sort of a standard 
Yeah, I, I actually think. remember taking this test maybe a few years ago, and that's why I refused to do it when you when you had mentioned it because I remember going through about halfway thinking this is so boring. Yeah. These questions are dumb. Uh, the site looks like crap before. Yeah. And I was like, I just don't want to do it. And this time I, I logged in. I was like, oh, this you know very cool looking design, very you know user friendly. And what I liked was there were almost no questions. First off, it only took like 10 minutes to do. And second, there were no questions were very ambiguous because I think that is what fails most tests mm. is when you kind of have to select something even though you didn't really want to choose either option. Yep. And then it's, it messes up your results. While this one, I think you, what you guys want to do when you go through the test is be an asshole about it or be ultra flu-flu about it. Whatever you feel, whatever your actual feelings are, just choose that. Don't choose something based on what you think think you should be like oh yeah or what you know society wants you to be just pick exactly what you know what jumps out to you the most mm -hmm. totally yeah and, and try not to be in the middle too much like if you feel something you're very strong about it i think it gives you different degrees of agreement or disagreement you can have like yeah like identify what you really feel so i just logged into zetalabs.com and you can tell it's made by the same person Super cute I yeah it. it's a really really cool design oh. so if anyone's looking for a really high-end UX designer. I, I'm sure she charges a lot of money, so don't contact her and waste her time. If don't be broke. Yeah, if you're broke. But if you're like a big company, you know, and you have, I want to say, minimum. I, I'm just gonna guess. I, I don't know her prices, but I'll say like a minimum of 10, 10 grand to start. Then she's amazing. So you know, I met her in person. She's a very cool girl. Check out zetalabs.com. And speaking of which, uh, how can people get in touch with you, Kristen? Yeah. So I'm just finishing up my website. Um, I do conscious business coaching and I'm a wellness teacher and I actually am just finishing up a meditation series. So you guys can get that by going to my website, which is just my name, kristinyates.com. It's a 14 days meditations for mastery. So I'm really into self-optimization and, you know, really the stuff that we just talked about. So how to set a foundation for, uh, yeah, like opt self-optimization and all that good stuff. Yeah. I like it. So check out kristinyates.com. Right. We'll have a link in the show notes. This is episode 141 of the Travel Like a Boss podcast. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did uh, and you guys take the test, do me a favor, leave it, leave a comment either in our Facebook group, the Travel Like a Boss Army, or in the show notes of this episode at travellikeabosspodcast.com, episode 41. Let us know your personality type, what you learned from it, what weakness you are working on and anything else yeah i think that's it just love to hear what you guys all come up with yeah all right well thank you guys so much for listening to the show and also for leaving all these amazing five-star reviews of the podcast because you guys are the reason why this keeps growing and we can reach more people uh you also give me the inspiration and the time to be able to you know sit down and create these these cool episodes especially these video ones which take forever to edit by the way <laughs> um so shout out for this month we've gotten a couple new uh reviews do you want to you want to read one of these for me sure november 22nd all right i've been following johnny's podcast for a few months oh this is by molly fiona should i say who it's by yeah sure molly fiona inspiring and life-changing I've been following Johnny's podcast for a few months now, and I'm hooked. I've listened to every episode back to back, and I'm 100 episodes in. Johnny's inspirational, motivational, and full of fantastic advice and tips. His guests are well-selected, and each one brings individual value. I learn something new in each episode. Since I started listening just a few months ago, I've set up, since set up my own successful freelance business, started dropshipping, and made the decision to become a digital nomad and just booked a flight out to Asia. <laughs> so this podcast really has had a huge influence in my life feeling very positive and looking forward to meeting the gang in Chiang Mai next year. I can't recommend this podcast enough, whether you're a traveler, an entrepreneur, or just looking for ideas on how to live a happier, healthier life, this podcast is for you. Thanks so much, Johnny, Molly. So thank you, Molly, Fiona, and thank you, Kristen, for reading yeah. that. Uh, when you guys come out here, uh, look us up. Uh, Kristen's going to be in town. I'm in town. We'd yep. love to meet. Kristen, I'll give to you a Chiang hug. Mai. I'll give you a slap on the head. Right. That's it. So, Sounds good. <laughs> all right. See all of you guys next week. Peace out. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Travel Like a Boss podcast. If you want to hear more, including the bonus, how to choose the perfect niche episode, join our mailing list at travellikeabosspodcast.com. See you next week. And remember, if you want to travel like a boss, you need to be your own boss. So start your online business today and start living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. <laughs>